Anyways, back on the show, Alex Skolnick of uh, Testament fame and, of course, Metal Allegiance, and that's what we're talking about today. Alex, what's going on? Hey, hey, good to see you. Thanks for having me. On September the 6th, the Metal Allegiance will take the uh, stage at the Starland Ballroom in Sayreville, New Jersey. It's Sayreville, mm -hmm. correct? Sayreville, yeah. Sayreville, Sayreville. On that bill, there will also be Mean Streak and Held Hostage. So you guys are, are doing the East Coast. In January, you did the House of Blues uh, during NAM Week. Ever. We've played the East Coast before, but it's okay. been a long time. All right. So what can people expect this time versus, let's say, the last performance in January? Well, every show is a little different. The set list is slightly different. The lineup is slightly different. For this show, we have the core four, uh, myself, Portnoy, Mangi, Ellison, and we don't often all get to play on the same show together, okay. but uh, it's exciting. And uh, we have some great guests. We have Dave Davidson of Revocation. We have Doc mm -hmm. Coyle of Bad Wolves on guitars and on vocals. We have uh, Troy Sanders of Mastodon uh, from Accept, Mark Tonio, oh, okay. uh, John Bush. So this exact lineup has never performed together, even though we have played with all those guys in some configuration. All right. So what kind of set list are you looking at? Uh, a, a balance of the Metal Allegiance tunes and cover songs, right? Usually, is that what it is? Yeah, because the, the project started as a covers project that would play clinics mm -hmm. doing covers with all-star uh, performers and it evolved into a group that does originals as well so uh, we have two albums one mm -hmm. is uh, this self-titled album and then we have uh, volume two power drunk majesty and uh, yeah fans are quite receptive to that music it's, it's really like got its own cult following so it's a nice mix of classics and originals are there any surprise guests this time around like maybe bobby uh, bobby blitz hits the stage and jumps on or things like local guys and yeah I mean, if he was available he would be there <laughs> okay. the regulars that aren't available he uh would be great especially since it's in jersey but uh yeah with part of the reason that there aren't more concerts with this group is that everybody has very busy tour schedules. So yeah, it's hard yeah, to find yeah. everybody up at the same place at the same time. Um, just tell me more about Metal Allegiance. And I mm -hmm. mean, is it really picking up more steam today than it has? In, I guess it's 10 years, right? Now it's going on mm -hmm. 11. Yeah, hard to believe it's been 10 years. What are fans most excited about just seeing these all-star guys? Or I mean, there's always that core, which which is the glue, I guess, at the end of the day, right? Sure. Do you find that it's picking up more steam now than it had over the 10 years? I think so. I think uh, there are a lot of so-called super groups out there. And at the time we got this together, there were many of them, you know, you, from Hollywood vampires to you know, giraffe tongue orchestra, too many to name. And they're great. They're, but uh, a lot of them tend to be one-off, projects and uh with metal allegiance there's there's a unique quality the shows really feel like a party in a way um because there are so many of us especially at the bigger shows such as the annual anaheim appearance surrounding nam yeah yeah, yeah. it has the feel almost of a, a variety show where you have different players running on stage and off stage. And then the next song or the next two songs, some players will stay on, some will come off. So it it's really um, as much of an event as a concert. Oh, during the VIP, there's a package VIP I'm looking at, early access to the venue, exclusive pre-show meet and greet with the members, right? To take photos, uh, autograph signings, collectible show posters, uh laminins crowd free access to the merchant merchant merchandise booth i guess they have like they get in earlier to to grab what they want from the merch booth i, I would assume 
Yeah, if I may say, it is a really cool meet and greet. Okay. Uh, it's very festive. There's a lot of ball busting that goes on, not just between the musicians, but the fans. And it's everybody just has a really good time. It's not one of those awkward, uncomfortable meet and greets, you know. And we've gotten a lot of positive uh, feedback from fans saying that it's it's really one of their more memorable, positive meet and greet experiences. What were some of the big moments in the ten years of the Metal Allegiance that so you know that was a legendary moment? Oh well, there there have been a few. Um, yeah, one of the interesting things about the project is it sort of allows for these unique uh, collaborations and in some cases reunions. Yeah. Uh, the two that I can think of off the top of my head, uh, one was uh, Dave Lombardo playing with us and uh, Gary Holt who was regular, and they had not played together since uh, Dave's uh, exit from Slayer. Yep. And it was, uh, if I remember right, uh, Mark Asagueda on vocals. And, um, yeah, it was like partial Slayer. I wasn't even playing. It was like, <laughs> okay, we're just <laughs> going to let... I, oh, and I think, uh, I think Phil Demel played the other guitar, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So I almost have to wonder if Kerry might have seen that because, you know, that's like <laughs> half his band now. <laughs> um, so, and I remember that it was just really e exciting. And I think at that point, Slayer had already begun their retirement run. It was around that time, 2017 or 2018. And to have Lombardo and Holt and the rest of that, those guys playing those songs was just great. And just did, really doing it justice. And then another one was, um, you know, Charlie Benante was a frequent guest. Mm -hmm. So he will, you know, step in and come come and go sometimes. And then uh, John Bush, who's going to join us in New Jersey. You know, he's he's been there for a few years now, but... Um, those guys had not been in the same room in a long time ever since yeah the the bush's cer ceremonial or unceremonial exit from anthrax i don't know what happened and anyway it just here they were in the same room and they talked and it was they kept talking and it was well, yeah, it was good, and I don't know. They worked out whatever they needed to work out, and uh, uh, next thing you know, yeah, there we we did a, I think we we did a Bush era Anthrax song with with both of them, and that hadn't happened in in ages. So there there've been a couple uh, magic moments like that. That's really cool. Uh, are you still doing op ed pieces? Um, once in a while, I have my own Substack now. Mm -hmm. And that. yeah, you can subscribe to it. Just look for my name, uh, Alex. Okay. And uh, I've had a few offers to keep uh, do do more pieces, but it it's very time consuming. It's, yeah. a, it's a big challenge. So uh, I, I let the music take over, but I do I do enjoy doing it, and that's why uh, the Substack is so helpful because I set my own deadlines and as it is i'm only able to write a piece every few months but but that works for me yeah so well, that's cool uh, what about um what has the metal allegiance sort of given you in this sort of group that you sort of didn't have or didn't realize you didn't have in let's say testament um well it's you know it's a different situation so uh as great as, as it is you know having a band uh especially a band like testament that's been around a number of years and you know has evolved a lot it's mm -hmm. just you know it's sound 
you know, never pretty much not sounded better at this point. Um, you know, when I, when we work on that music, it is for one vocalist. You know, yeah. he, his name true. is Chuck. <laughs> it's true. That's true. Um, and with Metal Legions, it, it just opens up all these doors because you can imagine anybody you want singing over. It. You know, instead of, um, you know, just one type of voice, I might think, okay, you know, what about a clean voice? What, what about an upper register voice? What about a female voice? Yeah. yeah we yeah. can do that. So we have, you know, having, you know, the freedom to do that is, is great. And um, yeah, it's a different thing. I mean, I'm very respectful for that testament. It's an established sound that we have. Eric Peterson, credit to him. He's the one guy that uh, he keeps it alive. He's, he's been there from day one. He started it. So it's got it's got a all the music has has to work for him, and you know it wouldn't be any other way. But with the allegiance, yeah, we we don't know what it is. You know, it's just there's just a lot more openness because, and also because we don't have a this extensive back catalog, so it doesn't get put against. Oh, you know, well now they you know they're sounding not enough like how they started out or. You know, they really should go back to their mid period or what you know what I mean? It's <laughs> yes, fresh yeah. and you don't have that kind of pressure. I, th I think the word is pressure. Um, what about recording a new album? So you have two already that were done. I, I think the last one was maybe five years ago, I'm guessing, four years ago. Yeah, like because time flew. Time flew. I mean, what about, you know? talking to the guys and saying, Hey guys, let's, let's work on some new music or I got an idea that doesn't fit in the Testament world, but it'll fit more in this world. Well, there's plenty of those. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm all, I'm always writing music mm -hmm. and I, I present a lot of music to Testament. Uh, some of it ends up on recording. Some, some of it doesn't. So uh, by by the time Metal Allegiance gets around to doing music, I always have a demo or two I can play and see how they like it. And then, yeah, every now and then there's, uh, yeah, one of those songs will end up uh, being a Metal Legion song. That's what happened with uh, the song The Accuser mm -hmm. with uh, Trevor on, on vocals, May He Rest in Peace, from Black Dahlia Murder. Uh, yeah. That... That song, and that that's one of our essential songs now. Yeah. Um, and that was something I you know, and it wasn't that it, you know nobody would question that it would fit with testament because I, I wrote it with testament in mind. I think the only reason it didn't make it on the record was we had something else kind of similar. There was enough other music that was similar, but um, uh, yeah, with giving it to that allegiance and having, you know, Portnoy play drums on it, and Trevor, who was who we just met at that point, it just gave it a whole other feel. So, so yeah. we'll see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, you really don't have any plans right now to to pull out a, a new Metal Legions album, but no, because uh, everybody's schedules are so tight, it really only makes sense once we have a deal in place okay. and everybody's schedule lines up, I know there is some industry interest and we have had some conversations, but we're all still uh, making up for lost time uh, with, with COVID. You know, there was like nearly two years where there was no touring and band schedules got pushed back. And ever since then we're, <laughs> Yeah, we're we're trying to make up for lost time. We still are. Um, yeah. I've got a seven week tour coming up in the US with Testament. Uh barely a week and a half in between before a European tour. That's five weeks. I just got back from Europe and five so there's just and I'm doing an instrumental tour next week. So um it, there's just too much going on. Where's the instrumental tour next week? Uh, it starts in uh, North Carolina. Okay. And uh, there's an event called Prague Day. Okay. It's a lot of progressive 
rock bands play there. Is the, the Alex Skolnick Trio? Is that is this that is a new group that's called Pact? Okay. Uh, it's with Percy Jones, who is the basis for Brand X and a pioneering list bass player. And he played with um, Brand X had Phil Collins on drums in the 70s. Okay. And he worked with Brian Eno. So he's a, a, kind of a legend. And it's also got Kenny Grahowski and Tim Motzer. And uh, yeah, we're doing um, about seven shows. The last one is actually the day after Metal Allegiance. It's going to be in. Uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, and then I have a new album that I recorded uh, last year with my trio, and mm -hmm. that's being mixed now, and that'll come out next year. It's amazing. And then you got the Testament Tour starting right after everything else, right? Your yeah, yeah, your September tenth. September tenth. That's going through, through almost through Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, North America, Canada, and the U.S. It's great. Yeah. Correct. You know what always blows my mind? Is it true that you started, you were 16 years old when you joined Testament? I was. It's crazy. Yeah, I was in 11th grade. Yeah. <laughs> what By did the you time I was 18, most of my friends were off, going off to college. I was going off to uh, record my first album. It's insane. It's insane. But there is a certain energy at 16 that you don't have later on. I'm not to say you don't, but there's something different about being 16 years old. Oh, yeah. And also at that time, you're just ready to jump in and <laughs> jump into the fire. Don't commit see what the world has to so get the hell out. of. It's, it's very funny because I in my time away from Testament, I went back to school and got a university degree and got interested in creative writing and journalism and all this. But at that time, I was just one of those youths that was just not fitting in in school uh socially or academically i just wanted to get the hell away from school so to me it was just <laughs> i don't care just take me away i don't care send send me anywhere put me on tour let's when, go when you had to sign any contracts i guess your parents had to sign with you yeah actually i they had to co-sign you had to co-sign every all the agreements and whatever it was yeah right? yeah but by the time we complete i remember um the first record the negotiations dragged on so long that we were in the studio while negotiations were still happening it was kind of crazy um but i guess at, at that point you know we know we're going to be signed to the label they're not going to pull the plug they've already invested in getting us in there but there were there were there were still negotiations going on and i turned 18 right before that so by the time we actually signed our first record deal, I was able to sign it myself because I was of so, age. So you joined 16, you did the demos when you're probably around 17. Is that it? And then when you first got your record deal, you're just turning 18. Or 18, yeah. Around there. When, yeah. when did Zetro actually leave? At what point? At the, after the demos or when you started recording the album? Uh, the, we did one demo with him. The very first demo. It's called Demo 1, and it's got the um, skull mascot on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was probably a uh, short time after that, maybe four or five months. I th if, I, if, if I remember right. Uh, I get that. Oops. You try again. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <Ignore> <laughs> um, if I, yeah, if I remember right, I joined the band. It was late um, 84. Mm -hmm. I just turned 16 of I think 80 yeah 80, the first part of eight, 1985 mm -hmm. uh, we did a few gigs and did the first demo and I think the second half of 85 if I'm not mistaken is when he left it might have been 1986 what was it all like oh come on man why are you leaving now we're just getting started is that that kind of feeling or you're 16 you're going come on let's just keep going no problem uh it was it was a big shock and it, it was definitely um it was definitely like a life lesson in a way because zetro he's a larger than life character mm -hmm. and yeah bless him we're all he's 
we're friends and he even collaborates with Chuck on the lyrics and he's like family. But yeah. at the time, uh, you know, it was part of the reason it was such a shock is he was like a drill sergeant and he would berate anybody who was late to rehearsal and just a lot of pep talks. And he, you know, he was like an angry sports coach. <laughs> You know, we're going to go all the way and, you know, you're with us or against us. And, you know, and so he was that guy. So to have yeah. him be the one that comes to us, that he's leaving. <laughs> yeah. First opportunity he gets with somebody else. It was, it was, you know, it, it, it was definitely a shock. Those were, did you guys, did you ever think your band would be, who they are today as big as testament has been gotten today and or has lasted this long what i mean i didn't happen? know what would happen you know at 16 what are you thinking you know like sky's the limit or yeah i mean i was looking at bands like you know ozzy and dio mm -hmm. which you know those of us of a certain age can remember the first half of the 80s yeah those were huge bands those were arena acts and that was a little more where I was coming from. I was more of a, a, a power metal player. And I wanted to be somebody that could play for uh, a Dio or an Ozzy. And I actually very did briefly did play with Ozzy in the next decade, but that's a whole other story. Um, so, I yeah, I was looking at that. I was looking at these huge arena games. But then we had this scene... And it was very clear that the music was pretty intense and so high energy. I didn't really see it uh, taking off and being big. I thought it would be like um, punk in a way. I thought it would be like, you know. Three years and that was it, right? Or like the, you know, or like the, you know, we still had the, the Ramones were still going at that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they had a great following. But they were still playing clubs. Yeah, they're packing them. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be like the Ramones or the Dead Kennedys. You know, we'll, we'll you know we'll be like at the, the top of the club level. But then Metallica, you know, became one of the biggest acts in the world. And then Slayer, who was somebody you you know the least likely to <laughs> right. become mainstream, I <laughs> actually you know became. Uh, they, they achieved mainstream recognition. I certainly there was nothing mainstream about their sound, and you didn't hear them on the radio. But you know, today, I mean, you can stop the average person on the street, and they, they will have heard of Slayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. So yeah, I didn't see any of that happening with us or any of the other groups. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, when I was that age, I, I thought it would be more contained than it is as mass as it is today, you know, mass acceptance. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, it's incredible. I talked to Chuck Billy, he says the album's pretty much done, the new album. Uh, he says it's very versatile. I just talked to him a, I don't know, a month ago, maybe. I mean, is there anything yeah. you can add to that or uh, to get people excited about the tour coming up? Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, uh, you know, our current drummer, Chris Dovis, is just, you know, he, I think he's really lit a fire under everyone i think everybody's going to be really impressed um yeah we've had some amazing drummers i think that's one of the reasons why the um i'll call it the resurrection period of testament mm -hmm. has gone so well uh with all due respect to louie who's still a great friend of ours the original drummer uh he wasn't like a drummer's drummer and he, when he left the band, he never joined another band. Uh, just, you know, didn't play. Um, everybody we've had since then has been a drummer's drummer. So when I came back to the band in the mid 2000s, you know, we had, <laughs> it was always a drummer's drummer, John Tempesta, Gene Hoagland. And, uh, you yeah, know, we did a tour cycle with Dave Lombardo, which was amazing. But you know, scheduling conflicts were too much, and you know, to do an al to really do do a new album with this band, especially for the drummer, it's such a level of commitment. 
I would have been surprised if that worked out. So I know some people were hoping that would continue and they would see us with Dave and Barter. But I'll tell you, nobody's complaining. <laughs> Everybody that here's the band. There's something new happening with Chris, and it's very well captured on this record. And uh, yeah, there is uh, there is something for everybody. There's super fast, high energy songs. Uh, there is a slow song that we haven't done, you know, in a, a long time. The type that we haven't done um, with some uh, elements that we've never done before. And uh, yeah, I, th- I think it, it's it, it's definitely going to be a testament record, but it's it's going to have a lot of uh, diversity as well. Are you have you contributed uh, song wise to this album? Uh- I have, yes. Okay, good, good, good. All right. I think that's pretty much Rick it. I met uh, a few times and uh, worked like we used to, okay. kind of bouncing ideas off each other. And Because I remember last time I spoke to you, you said, you know, in the early years, you're kind of, they bring you in for the guitar solo, right? But are, have you has this role changed where you're contributing more and more to the, the, the basic song structures? No, the early years, I was the main writer. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe I got it wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you can hear the difference. No, no. With... Maybe I got it wrong for what you said to me. That's all. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and sometimes I, I that people do seem to get that wrong. I mean, you can, if you listen to the first album, uh, there are songs from before I joined the band, mm-hmm. uh, songs like Curse of the Legions of Death, yeah. Raging Waters, <laughs> And there's a very clear line from when I joined the band. Then it's the haunting, apocalyptic city. Yeah. Burn off. Right. Suddenly there's harmonies, there's key changes. That's all that was all me. Okay. I brought that in. Uh and pretty much everything in that whole first period um since then was co-written. Okay. Um since I came back, um yeah, you know, there were a number of years where I wasn't around, and uh, Eric got much better at. He learned how to do harmonies on his own, and be, you know, became a much better writer. He's a great writer, and there have, you know, there are albums where he writes more of the material. Okay. But I, I got in reverse order. I got in. Reverse oh yeah, order. completely, yeah, yeah. completely. Yeah. Um, but you know. The, this one, there, there, there's a lot more contributions, and people seem to like it when we write together. Um, and I, I have, uh, I even have a whole song, comp- at least one whole composition on, on this record. Uh, the last one I had two. I had Code of Hammurabi and Symptoms. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, it's it's a myth. I don't know where. It, I think it it started because there was one record where I didn't, I wasn't where Eric wrote most of that. And then it became the story. Oh, you know, we're here to clear it up. That's, we're here that's to clear not, it up. That was never how it was. That's, okay. not, <laughs> that's not how it is. So perfect. All right. Yeah. September 6th, uh, at, again, at Starlin Ballroom in Sayreville, New Jersey, and uh, opening acts is Mean Streak and Held Hostage. That's Metal Allegiance. You can still grab the tickets. I'll put the description and the ticket links in the description of this video when it comes out and there's vip packages and it's going to be fun the vip yeah, again the vips are really fun people have a great time with this vip troy so. sanders john bush dave davidson are amongst the others who are joining the core the core That's group right. will be there all right thank you very much for your time alex thanks for all this information i enjoyed it you're welcome my blood and, uh, and i see you in montreal canada Thanks for having me. All right, do that.